Welcome to Trash and Cash. In this series, I fix up eBay junk to see if I can turn a profit. And in this episode, I have a Pokemon Blue Game Boy game. So the seller listed this as faulty, and they said that it freezes upon startup. But don't let me just tell you, let me show you the listing, which is on screen now. So there is no point just having it sat here. Let's test it and see if it freezes. This particular Game Boy Color I'm going to use, I call it the Purple Beast. You can see why up here in the top right. Okay, so part of the Nintendo logo does seem to be broken. Let's just give it a classic reinsert just to see if that's the case. And it is still doing it. This must be what they mean by freezing. So let's open up the Game Boy game and take a look inside. So on initial inspection, everything does seem to be okay. Notice that it's got the original battery still, which is good. And there seems to be some kind of, I don't know actually, almost some corrosion in the middle of the board. Like it's almost like it's just eaten through. But I don't see any actual corrosion itself. And there seems to be some up here as well on these vias. Uh, oh, and, and some down here at the test points. And it looks a bit weird. It looks like it's corrosion, but not at the same time. Either way, we'll have to clean this all up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the contacts because normally that is what the cause is of this weird freezing. So to do that, I'm going to use a combination of IPA and contact cleaner. Disgusting. I also like to go over these contacts with a fiberglass pen. So now the contacts look a lot cleaner, so let's put it back into its case and test to see if it's got the same issue. Now it's in a slightly different area, it looks a bit more corrupted than before. Let's give it the old reinsert. And we still seem to have the same issue, so cleaning the contacts didn't help. So taking a closer look at this corrosion, there seems to be certain areas that are corroded. So all of these needs to be checked with continuity. However, this one here I'm not concerned about because it's on the same copper area as this other via next to it, so it is still making a connection. However, I am still going to clean it up with some IPA to prevent any more corrosion. These two up here I can clearly see are broken, so those will need to be fixed. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover this all with IPA and try and remove any potential corrosion that's left. I'm going to be using a Pokemon Red cartridge to see where these tracks go. So when checking with the known working one, we can see that the test point here matches up with this via here. However, on the broken one, I get no continuity at all, so those vias are definitely broken. So checking on the good one, I want to find out where these vias actually go to. So I'm going to probe around until I can find continuity somewhere. Ah, so this particular via goes to this part of the IC. I'll take a note of that for later. So let's check if this test point here has continuity to the IC pin. So there's definitely no continuity there. So that's confirmed 100% an issue. Now I'm going to check where the second via goes. It seems to go to the battery positive. So checking on the broken board again. Let's see if this test point goes to the battery positive or if this is also a faulty via which it is. So I'll be taking a note of that. So there'll be two wire mods so far for both of those vias. Now to check the continuity of some of these other traces. These ones are quite easy. I can just check from via to via. If I get a buzz, then there's continuity. If I don't, then there's a break in the track.
I can also use the same method for these ones down here. I'm quite surprised about this one because this one here looks really bad in person but there's clearly continuity. So now this one looks problematic and let's check from here. And that's confirmed there is absolutely nothing. So there's also a break there. So that's something else I need to note down. So I'm also going to check these last ones here. So now we need to figure out where this wire goes. So this one, when you flip it over, actually goes to this part here, which connects to this IC pin there. So checking on my good board, I can see that actually it goes to this particular wire over here. Whereas on the broken one, it does not. So I can cheat a little and just make a wire from there to there. So the last two places I need to check on the faulty one are the two wires here. So on the good board, these connect to the battery negative. On the broken board, these do not. So clearly these wires are broken, so we're gonna have to do some wire mods there also. So hopefully you've taken note of all the things that are faulty of this, because I certainly have. So let's start repairing these. For the first one, I'm going to shear away at the solder resist to expose the copper, and then I'm going to run some wires through the hole. The wires I'm going to use is some enamel wire. Although this looks like copper wire, it's not actually conductive until you melt off the ends with a soldering iron. So as you can see here, the tin tips that I've just made are the actual conductive part and the rest of it is not. And this is how I will prepare all my future wire mods, so there's no need to show you this again. As you can see, I have now fully exposed the copper in that area and I'm going to try and tin it. So I've actually changed my mind. I'm going to put the wires through the wires rather than the hole there, just because I think it would look neater and be more structurally sound. To keep this in place, I'm just going to use a bit of captain tape. I'm just going to heat up the joint to connect both wires. And just to make sure they don't move, I'm going to whack another bit of captain tape over the wire completely. So now as you can see, they're poking through and they are way too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these and I'm going to scratch away the solder resist in between these two to reveal the copper and do a nice solder joint across them all. So as you can see, this is a nice wire mod. There is solder connecting both wires together straight onto the copper area, so I would consider this part repaired. What I'm going to do is replace the captain tape on this with something a little more permanent and move on to the next repair. So as you can see, this is a little bit more permanent and I've made sure not to cover the hole because the wires that I'm about to do from here are going to go through the hole. So it's a good job I decided to go through the wires for the previous repair rather than through the hole. So to repair these, I'm going to scratch away at the tracks and then I will attach the wires. I could use the test points. You want to keep it as minimal as possible. So as you can see, I've nicely scratched away the solder resist, exposing the copper. So I just need to tin these and then we can attempt to put the wire mods on. So I'm going to start with by soldering one of the wires to the battery positive. This will help hold the wire in place for when I try and put it on the tracks underneath. Now I'm just going to get this into place and then just apply my solder and iron. And there we go, the connection is made. Now to quickly do the second one. So if you remember, the second wire actually goes to the IC's pin 
So I'm going to attach it here first, like I did with the previous wire, so that when I put it through the hole, it's already in place and shouldn't move too much. So after some playing around, I managed to get it to just fit any shorter and I would have had to make a new wire. So all I need to do now is just apply my solder and iron. Now they are both making a solid connection. These two are fully repaired also. I am going to put some captain tape over this just to make sure they're held in place. So now hopefully the final wire mod and I have saved the easiest for last because this is the one I'm slightly cheating on because I've got two nice wires that I can just poke the wire through and solder. As you can see they've actually gone through and I've soldered them and that is also now repaired. So how many wire mods was this? We have the one here that connects from here to here and then we have another two that connect to the negative of the battery. One of them that connects to the positive battery, one of them connects to the pin on the IC. So that's five wire mods. Impressive. Do you know what would be even more impressive? If this actually worked. So let's test and have our fingers and toes crossed. Just as a side thing I will not be replacing the battery in this video. I'm saving that for another. So the moment of truth. Hey, and look at that. It looks normal. Does it load? Hey, it looks like it's loading. That's good. I, I need to fully test this and see if it fully works. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that sound. So everything seems to work, which is great. I wasn't having much hope the more and more issues I found. <laughs> so let's take this back out of the case and give the case a good old scrub. To clean the case, all I'm going to use is an antibacterial wipe, cleaning cloth, and just give it a nice once over. So I'm going to try and attempt to remove this permanent marker. So I'm going to try it with some plastic polisher first. I'm going to try with some flux remover. Some IPA. And despite all those things, I seem to be making no progress with this. That is fine. If you do know how to remove this or have any suggestions on how to, please let me know in the comment section below. Maybe I could do a revisit or I'll just do something on my own time. So now let's put the game back in its case for one last time. And finally, with that, with a million wire mods done, the game is now working. And I'm glad that this beautiful game could have been repaired. Definitely have to be slightly more careful with this one. Can't go lumping it around because of those wire mods, but that's a okay. So let's get to the cost breakdown. To purchase this game, it cost me £7.94p. So because I haven't replaced the battery yet, I could probably only get about £12 for this if I was to sell it. That would then make the associated fees £1.85, while the cost of repair would only be a pound. 
despite the number of wire mods used, it's such a little amount. This is just rounded up to cover all the cleaning costs, the wire and the solder. Post, it would also cost about a pound. Despite all this, I would profit 21p. Of course, there's one thing I don't ever mention, but I definitely need to mention it with this particular video, is this doesn't include the time to fix. This particular one took a very long time to fault find and a very long time to get those wire mods secure. A lot of it was chopped out of the video, but I definitely spent many hours on this. And now that doesn't seem as much worthwhile. However, I enjoy doing it. What's your thoughts? Let me know down below.